On case text, annotations are available for federal and state statutes, regulations, and rules. These annotations show you how statutes, regulations, and rules have been interpreted and applied by the courts. In this short video, I will show you how to get to a specific statute, the features that are available on the statutes page, and then walk you through the annotations. Let's look at an example. I am going to use 42 USC section 1983, a well-known civil rights statute. Now, if I know my set statute citation, I can just enter that citation right into the search bar on my case text homepage. When I enter in the citation, the statute link will auto populate as a result beneath the search bar. I can just click on the link to go right to my statutes web page. But what if I don't know the citation of my statute? Well, I can look it up and I can do so from the Library of Statutes, Rules, and Regulations. That is available from the section symbol that appears in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. If I click on that section symbol, I will be taken to the Case Text Library of Statute Codes and Regulations. We have statutes, regulations, and rules for all federal and state jurisdictions. Here, I'm going to browse the US code to try to find my statute. Now, if I know my, a phrase that appears in my statute, I can search for it by key term by clicking the magnifying glass next to search within. Here, I know that deprivation of rights appears in my statute, but I'm just not sure where that statute is found in the US code. I can enter in that phrase and then click the magnifying glass to initiate a search. I am taken to a results screen where I am shown all statutes in the US code that contain my phrase, deprivation of rights. The top result is the statute I'm looking for, section 1983. I can just click that link and now I'm on my statutes page. So what can you do once you're on a statutes page? Well, case text offers a number of different tools and features to help you understand how courts have interpreted and applied your statute. The first thing you may notice when you pull up a statutes page is colorful text. I'm going to go through the green highlighted text first. So green text is used to notify you that there are cases that have cited this language and as I'm doing here, if you hover your mouse over the green text, a dialog box will appear telling you how many cases have cited this language. You can then click the green text to get a full list of the cases citing this passage. Here, there are a thousand cases citing this green text. Now, if I want to narrow this list and search through these cases citing the green text, I can do so by scrolling all the way to the bottom of the dialog box and clicking the blue button that says see and filter all citing cases. What that will do is take me to a separate tab in my browser that now shows me all cases citing this language in my statute and will provide a search bar and filters that will allow me to narrow my results. For example, if I want to find the cases citing this language in my statute, but that also discuss false imprisonment, I can enter in false imprisonment as a search term right here in the search bar that, that appears under filter and narrow. Then I click the magnifying glass. And what I'm left with is the 101 cases that cite to this green language in my statute but also discuss false imprisonment. I can further narrow my results by selecting filters that appear on the left-hand side of my screen. The default is to show you everything, including all jurisdictions. But if I want to limit my results to a specific jurisdiction, I can do so by selecting courts here on the left-hand side. I can also limit my results to those cases that address a specific type of motion. I can also limit my results to cases addressing a specific type of cause of action by selecting 
causes of action from the cause of action folder that appears here. I can also limit my results by party type by selecting the type of party that I want to focus on from the party motion, from the, excuse me, from the party filter that appears on the left-hand side of the screen. And I can also limit my results by date. Now, to go back to my statute, I can just click on the tab for my statute, and I'm back on the statutes page. Let's talk about the pink text. The pink text refers to portions of the statute, regulation, or rule that have been cited with emphasis added in judicial opinions. If you click on the pink highlighting, a window will appear, which will list all of the cases that have cited the pink highlighted text with emphasis added. This feature is used to alert you to phrases or sentences in a statute, regulation, or rule that were significant enough to warrant added emphasis by the courts. Now, like I did with the green text, if I hover my mouse over the pink language, a dialog box will appear which will tell me how many cases have cited the pink highlighted language, language with emphasis added. If I click on the pink highlighted text, the window will appear containing all of those cases. And if I want to see and filter all of the cases, I can do so by scrolling to the bottom of the window and clicking the blue button that says see and filter all emphasizing cases, just like we did with the green highlighted text. And here is the separate tab that has appeared in my browser that takes me to all 13 cases that have cited this language from my statute with emphasis added. And just like I showed you with the green highlighted text, you have a number of different options for searching through and narrowing your results. You can search by keyword, by jurisdiction, motion type, cause of action, party type, or date but let's go back to the text of my statute. Now, beneath the text of the statute, you will be given some notes that show you the history of the statute. And then at the bottom here, there's a window that shows you cases applying this statute, along with a link to the annotations on your statute. Here, there are 10,767 annotations. To access these annotations, I can click on this link here that shows me the number at the bottom of my screen, or I can go up to the top of the screen and select the annotations tab. So here is the page containing the annotations for my statute. And you'll be presented with two columns. I'm gonna first talk about the left-hand column, the key referencing passages. As it says right here, key referencing passages are frequently cited passages that reference your statute, rule, or regulation. Well, what does that mean? Well, sometimes courts use the same language over and over again to describe a statute. These heavily quoted passages that describe your statute will appear in the left-hand column. For example, the top referencing passage, which begins with the phrase, no merit, has appeared in more than a thousand cases. I know that because right here it says 90, 999 plus other cases have used this passage to describe my statute. So the key referencing passages are intended to show you how courts tend to talk about and describe your statute. What about the right hand side? Well, the right-hand column are the cases that apply this statute. And as it says here, these are summaries of how cases have applied your statute. What do we mean by that? Well, these are the cases that discuss whether your statute applies to or should be enforced under a specific set of facts. Now, you may notice that the number of cases applying your statute here thousand plus seems smaller than the number of cases citing your statute. If you look at the top tab here that says citing cases, there's a number showing you that there's 
336,000 cases citing this statute. Well, how come there are fewer cases applying this statute? Well, the list of cases applying your statute reflects a special subset of cases that have analyzed your statute in depth. By contrast, the Citing Cases tab will include every single case that has ever cited your statute, including those statutes, including those cases that have merely cited your statute in passing. So, by design, the cases applying your statute will be fewer than the cases citing your statute, and the cases applying your statute will be the ones that address your statute in more depth. Now, next to each case name in the right-hand column, you will see a parenthetical. This is a summary describing how the case has applied your statute. Where do these summaries come from? Not from case text. Case text does not write any of this content. These words here, including these summaries, are pulled from judicial opinions. We use the language of the courts to annotate statutes. Now, I deliberately selected 42 U.S.C. Section 1983 to show our annotations because there are so many of them since it's such a heavily cited statute. But how do you search through so many annotations? Well, you can do so using our search bar. You can use the search bar that appears on the left-hand side of your screen to search through the annotations by keyword and limit your results to those annotations mentioning a specific word or phrase. For example, you can search through the annotations to 42 U.S.C. Section 1983 to find the annotations that mention false imprisonment. Now, I am left with 13 key referencing passages and 61 cases applying this statute. What I have done is now look at those annotations that discuss my statute, but also discuss false imprisonment. So these are our annotations. What else can you do on case text to research a statute? You can also look at attorney analyses. That is available from the top menu bar here that appears underneath your statute. Attorney analyses consist of articles written by attorneys, law firms, and judges regarding your statute. You can also look at briefs that have cited to your statute. Clicking on this tab here, available from the top menu bar, and you can also look at cases that have cited your statute. And just like I showed you with the green and pink highlighted text, case text offers a number of filters and ways to search through cases. So here you can search through all 336,000 cases that cite to 42 U.S.C. section 1983 by keyword. You can limit your results by jurisdiction, motion type, cause of action, party type, and date. I hope this video has shown you how you can use case text to research statutes, regulations, and rules. Thanks so much for watching.